Hello, I'm Claude King on Return to Me, and this week I'd like for us to focus our attention on surrendering all. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said that we are to seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness. We need to keep in mind that there is a king of a kingdom. And when Jesus gave us a model prayer, He said, Pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That ought to be a first priority for us. We need to understand that Jesus himself is to be our Lord and Master. As a church, we need to understand that we are the body of Christ, and there's only one head of the body, and that is Jesus Christ. So we need to surrender to Him as Lord and Master individually. We need to surrender to Him as head of His church corporately. I, I shared with you in the first week uh, in the book, but I want to remind you of something that's been profound in my own life and, and prayer uh, life as well. I studied the word consecrate in preparation to write a little booklet years ago called Consecrate the People. And as I studied the word consecrate, there were two terms in the Old Testament primarily used to translate that word consecrate. One of those terms uh, means to sanctify, to set apart for God's purposes, to cleanse, to purify, to make holy, to put away the profane and the unholy, and we need to do that. But uh, the other term for consecrate is uh, made up of two Hebrew words. One of those words means an open hand. It's not a closed hand, but an open hand. And the other term means to fill up. And literally, the word means to fill up the open hands. I got to thinking, what's that got to do with consecration? Well, the imagery would be this. A priest standing beside the altar is waiting on you to bring your offering or sacrifice to consecrate it to God, to give it to God. And he's standing there with open hands waiting for you to bring your offering. You select one that's without spot or blemish, knowing that that's the only kind that would be acceptable to a holy God. Uh, you bring it to the temple, and as long as it's in your hands, it's yours. But when you fill up the open hands of the priest... It is consecrated to God, and it belongs to God. All of it belongs to God, and it becomes holy because God is holy. Well, uh, as I begin to read the occasions where that term was used, I was startled by the reality that it's not ever used for an animal sacrifice. It's not used for a grain offering or a drink offering. It's only used when people are consecrated to God. And so when God said, Consecrate Aaron and his sons to me as priests, that was the term that's used. When he said, Consecrate the Levites to me, that was the term that was used. That got me to thinking about what Paul said in Romans 12, where he said, In light of all of God's mercies, I beg you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. And, and by the way, this is a reasonable expectation of your worship. Though Paul didn't use the word consecrate in that passage, the meaning is exactly the same, that we as people are to consecrate ourselves to the Lord as a living sacrifice that He can use. Paul later wrote to the Corinthian church and he said, Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you? And uh, we are not our own. We've been bought at a price. We belong to God because Jesus purchased us. Later, Paul wrote to the church at Corinth and he said, Because he suffered and died for us, we are to no longer serve ourselves but we're to serve the one who died for us. We need to be surrendered to Jesus Christ as Lord. Well, as I begin to think about those scriptures and the meaning of that term, I thought about a, a book I'd read by Andrew Murray. Uh, described a, a 
a ceremony that took place during the Middle Ages that had something to do with prayer. And uh, so I did some research on it, and I found out that it was called an homage ceremony. During the homage ceremony, a king would sit on his throne, and he would hold out his open hands, and the subject would come and bow down and get on both knees in front of his king, and he'd put his palms together and place his hands inside the hands of his king. They would kneel and uh, pledge their loyalty and obedience by saying these words, I'm your man. It was an important pledge. It meant, I belong to you, and whatever you ask of me, I will obey. Uh, that pledge included, if I have to go to battle for you, I'm your man. And it included, if I have to die for you, I'm your man. Call on me. Christians who had to participate in that homage ceremony got to thinking, uh, you know, we've got a king in heaven who deserves our loyalty and obedience far more than this earthly king. And so they developed a new posture for prayer. If you think about it, getting on both knees, palms together, head bowed, that posture that uh, we, we would recognize as a symbol of prayer today began to take place or be, began to appear in the ninth century A.D., began to show up in church practice in the 12th century. This posture of getting on your knees and putting your palms together and, and uh, bowing your head to pray came from the homage ceremony in the Middle Ages. And uh, what would happen is that Christians, as they would kneel daily to pray, they would remind themselves that I'm entering the very throne room of heaven where King Jesus is seated on his throne and he's holding out nail-scarred hands to me saying, Claude, today I want your life, but not part of it, all of it. And they would pray, and I'm guessing something like this, King Jesus, today I'm your man, I'm your woman, my time is yours, my work is yours, my job. Uh, my plans and ambitions, my dreams for my future, they belong to you. My possessions, my financial resources, they're yours. Uh, my family belongs to you. My health belongs to you. My reputation belongs to you. My very life belongs to you. Command me and I'll obey you. Would that make a difference in your prayer life? In light of all of God's mercies, I beg you to present your body as a living sacrifice. Consecrate yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. Focus this time this week on surrendering all to Him.